Good day everyone and once again we're back together. Your favorite uncle is going to be helping you to prepare towards those uh, uh, June exams for those of you that are writing. Uh, but uh, for those of you that have already written, you know, it will be just constant, uh, you know, uh, revision that will be going through. Of course, prelims will also be coming, right? All right. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of this family. Uh, otherwise, you can also join in as a member, all right, so that you can benefit from some valuable perks. All right, so let's jump right into this question. So this is from the May, June 2023 uh, exam, all right, and uh, we'll have a look at it. Uh, sorry for the poor quality of it, uh, but um, uh, I think it's visible nonetheless. All right, let's jump right into the first question. So... We're given there the expression x squared minus 7x plus 12, which is equal to 0. Right, now we know we're going to factorize. This is a standard quadratic function, right? Uh, a quadratic equation, rather. So in this case, what we're going to do, we always say, well, if the coefficient of x squared is just 1, we look at this uh, constant term. So what are the factors of 12? such that when I add them, right, I'll get 7. I already know what those factors are, right? I'm sure you can uh, also think of them with me. That's 4 and 3. So that will be x and x there. That will be 4 and 3. Now, remember, when the sign is positive here, it means that the signs inside your brackets are the same. And what would be the sign? It would be the one of the middle term. So in this case, it means we'll have negative and negative there. So it means that x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 3. Right. I hope that you've got that. Okay. Moving right along. Right. So we've got there. Uh, they say to us we should um, solve for x correct to two decimal places. Now, the moment they know they say that, we know that we're going to use our quadratic formula, right? So there we've got that there. Uh, this is equal to 1. So let's get it into standard quadratic uh, uh, form. So uh, this would be 3x squared, right? So x times 3x, that's 3x squared. x times 5x, that will become 5x. Okay, and we're going to take the 1 to the other side. So that will be minus 1, which is equal to 0. So our A value is 3, our B value is 5, and C is negative 1. So we know we're going to say, well, that's minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, right? And this is divided by 2A, right? So we know our, a, our B value is positive 5. Right, but of course we've got a negative here, which is uh, from the formula. So that's plus minus. Okay, our b value is five squared minus four times our a value is three, and our c value is negative one. Okay, so this all of it divided by two times our a value, which is three. Okay, so um, if we can try to work out what is our What's underneath that square root? So that square root of 5 squared. Okay, that's... Uh, so we've got a negative times a negative there. So that's minus 4 times uh, 3 uh, into negative 1 as well. Okay, so that's negative 1. And that gives us square root of 37. So I'm going to leave it as that, right? So that's minus 5 plus minus the square root of 37, okay, divided by 2 times uh, 3, which will give us 6. Right, now let's give the answer to two decimal places, right? So the first one we're going to have um, minus 5, okay, plus the square root of 37, okay, uh, all of this divided by 6. Okay, we get x is equal to 0 0.18. That's two decimal places. Or uh, if we change that to negative, okay, so that becomes negative 1.85. So that's 1.85. 
All right, so those are our two solutions, right? Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So inequalities, so we've got x squared is less than minus 2x plus 15. Okay, so there we've got it there. x squared is less than, okay, minus 2x plus 15, right? So first of all, let's get it into a standard quadratic uh, uh, form. Right, so that's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15, right? This is less than 0, okay? So now what we need to do is to find the critical values, right? It means that uh, this is where the graph actually, if you were to look at this as a parabola, right, where the graph actually cuts uh, the x-axis. So if you think about it... Um, so we've got uh, x now factors of 15 such that when you subtract them they give us 2 that's definitely 5 and 3 right and in this case what does that tell us uh, signs are different because we've got a negative sign there and in this case it means the bigger product has got or takes the sign of the middle term so a bigger product will be 5x so this will be positive and that will be negative there. And so, in this case, now let's draw that number line. So it means our critical values are negative 5. Remember, you take this uh, values here. And in this case, what you do is that you change the sign, right? So, um, so that would be negative 5 and positive 3, right? So we know that before negative 5, uh, our graph would be positive so this would be positive negative positive right for those of you who don't understand this please have a look at uh, you know the videos that we have on um, inequalities right so um, what does that mean where is the graph less than zero you can see less than zero that's negative right uh, this is between uh, negative five and three right so our solution so we're going to give our solution that x is an element of. Now, please, I want you to note, it means that negative 5 and 3 are going to be excluded. And the reason why they are excluded is because they are not less than 0 at 5 and 3, but they are exactly equal to 0. If they had said less than or equal to, of course, we were going to include those values. And how would we indicate that with square brackets, right? Alternatively, another way to write this is to say, well, x is greater than negative 5 and is less than 3. Okay, right. I hope that you are following on this. Okay, so uh, as we move swiftly along, right, so we're going to look at uh, this one where we solve for x by squaring both sides, right? So, and uh, to get that going, okay, so let's write that down there, okay. So we've got the square root of 2 into 1 minus x, I believe, right? Um, and this is equal to x plus 1. So this would be equal to uh, x plus 1, right? So that's... No, actually, x minus 1. I'm not sure why I'm saying x plus 1. So that's x minus 1, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to make sure that we get rid of that square root. And how do we do so? We actually just simply square both sides. Please keep that in mind, right? So we're going to square both sides. Now, I'm writing that in red so that we remember when we are testing, we're just going to remove those brackets and the squares. And so that we check for our solutions, right? Now, the moment we square both sides, we know that the square root will be uh, cancelled by the square. So we're left with 2 into 1 minus x on this side. And on the other side, that's x squared minus 2x plus 1. Remember, when you expand in that case, uh, that is what you are going to, uh, you know, to, to get if you use your foil method, right? Now, whenever you square, I always say just square the first term 
right? Uh, square the last term. And then for the middle term, all you do is that multiplied by that, multiplied by 2. Okay, it's much easier to uh, do it that way. Right, now let's get right into it. So um, here on the left-hand side, we've got 2 minus uh, 2x, which is equal to x squared minus 2x uh, plus 1, right? Um, I can already see how this and that will cancel, right? Now, if I take this to the other side, it becomes negative. So now I'm going to have 0, which will be x squared. That's 1 minus uh, 2, which will give us negative 1. And all we simply do, in this case, um, we can say, well, x squared right keeping this here is equal to one right so if we take the square root uh, that is x is equal to plus or minus one so what are we doing we're taking the square root on both sides but remember when we take the square root we simply um uh you know uh, yeah so remember we have to say plus or minus uh, alternatively another way to solve this could have been well, you know when you've, we've got the difference of two squares here. So we could have said x is uh, x plus 1, x minus 1, right? Remember, when you factorize the difference of two squares, it will be brackets of uh, the square root of this one, the square root of that, but with different signs inside. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 is 1. So in this case, with different signs, and so x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to 1, which is exactly the same thing. Now, what we need to do is to, um, you know, just make sure that we test our answers. So we're not sure which of these two will be acceptable. So what you do is you take either one of your answers, right? And we are going to substitute it back into that original so we are 2 into 1 minus x, okay, equal to uh, x minus 1, right, before we squared it. So let's substitute uh, either one and see if we get the correct answer, right? So I'm going to say this is 2 times 1 minus a negative 1, okay? Um, when we substitute for x is negative 1. All right, so this will give us a negative 1 minus 1. Okay, so in this case, we've got square root of uh, 2 times 1 minus a negative 1. That's going to be plus 1. So 1 plus 1 will give us 2. So 2 times 2, that will give us, uh, you know, 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. But in this case, look at what happens. We get a negative 2. So definitely left-hand side, okay, is not equal to right-hand side. You can't have a positive square root giving you a negative answer. So that means that negative 1 is not applicable. Okay, right. Please keep that in mind, right? It's important to always check your answer. So... Uh, what about 1? So in this case, again, we're going to do the same thing. So that's 2 times 1 minus 1, okay? And in this case, x, which is 1, minus 1, okay? So that's 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 0. So that gives us 0 is equal to zero. So this one is definitely applicable. So it means the correct answer there is x is equal to one. Please remember to always check those solutions so that you verify if the answer is correct. All right, see you guys next time. Okay, look as we look at the next uh, question.